Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. This is Ed Biscara, and welcome to the show today. I'm excited to bring to you author Carl Heckman. He's also an entrepreneur, business owner, and wrote the book, Watertight, How I Survived the Submarine Service Without Losing My Mind. He's also an effective corporate trainer, but not in the way that you'd expect. And we'll let him get into that in a moment. Carl Heckman comes to us from the U.S. Navy as a trainer. He employs principles he learned while aboard a U.S. Navy nuclear sub. He provides training on how to train managers and employees in the manufacturing industry. And he helps them to create better leaders at every level, create a culture that supports mission of the company, and helps to build better systems. Uh, Carl, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, Ed. It's good to be here. Well, Carl, there's a lot of questions I have, uh, both uh, for you as an author and what you do as a trainer. But first, as every good story, we need to start from the beginning. What got you into the Navy? We mentioned you were in the Navy. What got you in the Navy and uh, what brought you to today? Well, I joined the Navy long ago as a teenager. I was 19 years old and looking for adventure and a job. And the Navy, I thought, provided both of those things in fine style. So in your book, you talk about being an, uh, a Navy, uh, Navy seaman aboard the ship. Tell me a little bit about uh, what, what prompted you to write the book, Watertight. Well, in truth, I wrote the book not so much about the Navy, but for the sake of my two daughters. Uh, I'll back up just a little more. My father died a couple of years ago. And it occurred to me as I was at his funeral and all that kind of thing that I didn't know my father very well. I knew his resume. I knew every place he'd lived, every place he'd worked. But I really did not know all of the the things that shaped the way he thought about things. And realizing that, I decided I wanted to uh, provide my daughters uh, with my history the real history, how it is I came to be, how it is they came to be as well. So it's like a story of Carl Heckman, the uh, father first, and that was prompted the story. Basically, yes, exactly right. I wrote it for my children and only later uh, began to realize that there were also uh, things in here that were uh, more useful um, in business rather than just for my kids. Uh, I've read a little bit of the book. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've, I'm still in it. It's, it's a great book. Um, I read the part where, you know, as every Navy, most people listening to this that's been in the military, there are certain, uh, what do you call it when you get day, days off? Shore leave? Is that what it's oh, called? Well, shore leave, yes. Uh, leave is a vacation. What you think of it, what civilians think of is vacation time. We call leave. Right. So uh, there's some great spots in the book about uh, the anecdotes and stories of what it's like to uh, be in Hawaii as a couple young sailors. So, uh Basically, in the book, um, I, I gather there's a lot about um, training and a lot about procedures. You know, you uh, talk about how you were green and you uh, were shown the ropes. Tell me a little bit about just stepping onto the boat for the first time. Well, sure. One of the things that the Navy does really well is they have a thing called a sea daddy. When you first show up on the submarine, you are assigned a man who is going to mentor you in the submarine, in the where things are, how to get things done. Uh, the idea being to get you uh, qualified to do things and being effective for the submarine as quickly as possible. Wow. So mentorship was a big uh, aspect of, of progressing through your career in the Navy, you can go up the ranks and whatnot, and you always had mentors, and, and that's very instilled in the Navy? Absolutely. That is a, that's a Navy principle that works very well and can be applied to business very easily. Business and in life, obviously, you've probably mentored your daughters as, as a father uh, and had that experience to Yes, and I've on. had great mentors uh, myself, uh, civilian mentors, you know, since the Navy, in business, in life, in other things. Oh, that's awesome. So, Tell me about now, uh, I know that uh, as a business owner, and we, we'll talk about this briefly, uh, you, you owned a company, uh, and, and give, me, give me the 30 second version of what you, you started and did. Sure, when I got out of the Navy, I started a business that uh, basically became a manufacturing company that manufactured shotgun barrels. 
We were the huh. only independent uh, manufacturer of shotgun barrels in the United States. Uh, what, was the, uh, what was the name of the company and what, who did you service? Heckman Specialties was the company. We made shotgun barrels for English and European shotguns that we repaired. And then also for other manufacturers um, that made arms in the U.S. So they would have a overflow. You know, their, their marketing guys would tell them that they're going to sell uh, 100,000 of these particular shotguns a year. They only have capacity to make 90,000 barrels, so they would hire us to make their that extra 10,000 barrels for them. So I imagine, again, from the principles and kind of the stories within the book, Watertight, that you brought that experience into mentoring and teaching and really honing in on uh, what is important for education within your own company. Absolutely. My business ran well. We, I didn't even realize it at the time that I was running it from principles that I had learned in the Navy. I was just doing it. And then later it occurred to me that, yes, I learned these things on submarines. This is how we did it on submarines. And those same things applied to us in, in business. Well, talking about what's applied now, you've since gone and exited out of that company successfully. It, it, uh, for our listeners, this company, uh, uh, was uh, m uh, mainly in Montana, but you, you were able to exit out of it and then relocate, and now you're living in the great city of Portland. Now, yes. tell me about your current uh, business and the kind of customers you help. Tell me about this uh, training. Sure. I, I formed uh, Heckman Leadership Development Company, which basically does all of the things that was working for me in business, uh, helping other people. I had a lot of friends in Montana that were small business people that would come to me and say, oh, how do you do this? How, I'm having trouble with this. You know, we're sitting at the bar at happy hour over beers, you know, and, and it <laughs> turns out that all these people were having the same problems, the same series of problems, even though they were in very different businesses. And I realized that people needed help and I knew how to help them. What is the main problem that you found amongst those business owners at the bar and now even past that, uh, what's the kind of a general problem you find that they have? Well, a general problem with the small business guys uh, is typically that they're very good at what they do, whatever that is, making shoes, making tents, making backpacks, whatever it is that, that you're making, they're very good at that. Uh, that's their passion. That's what they're interested in. That's what they get good at. What they're not so good at typically is making money. And that's a problem. Sooner or later, if you don't make money, you can't keep making whatever it is that you make. Right. So would you say that uh, one, one, uh, one problem might be, and I remember from our past discussions, one problem that might be is really good, effective training systems, you know, a system to really train. Would you find that that was... Uh, one thing lacking? Yes. In, in small business, as well as in bigger businesses, what many of them try to do is rely on hiring a, 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 a few rock stars, right? People that uh, are just really uh, great at whatever they do, the kind of people that are competent at everything. They give them a little bit of training and these people take off. Well, but the problem is they don't have a system for bringing anybody into the fold to do that. You need to be able to take other people in, and train them into ways that are going to help your business uh, do the jobs that need to be done, whether they're uh, routine jobs or non-routine jobs. No, well, so in, in whether it's a manufacturing job when they're on the plant on the plant floor or whether they're in management. Uh, that you might get, like you said, the rock star that has learned some of this training outside the organization, but within the organization and the organization's culture, there's not a set uh, way to train. And that's what I hear you doing. You come in and kind of uh, save the day. So what's, what's a common obstacle or problem that someone that may want to employ a trainer to come in and help put systems in place and help train better. What's a common obstacle that you found? And think back to maybe one of your past cases. Sure. Uh, I worked for a company not long ago who, uh, a very industrial company. Uh, I'm not sure I want to say their name just because <laughs> I haven't good. cleared that with them, you know, put that up them on the well, radio. You can tell them what they made. You yeah. know. Well, they, they were in energy. They dealt in uh, wind turbines. And 
they hired, they were expanding. The company is growing. They're expanding. They hired uh, a bunch of new trainers. And I came in and spent a couple of days with the trainers, getting all of them on the same page so that when they go out into the field to talk to, uh, you know, the employees to do, tr to perform training with the employees, that they're all speaking the same language. They're all doing the same things. Their process is repeatable. It can be done by anybody. That's, okay, so basically the trainers, the trainers were there to uh, get their expansion going, but they didn't have a clear uh, system or a clear uh, message on training. Is that kind of what you're saying? Exactly. They, they had trainers from various uh, walks of life that now were working for one company, and you need to get them all on the same page so that the message that each one gives is exactly the same. Well, and and like you said, these guys might, they're rock stars. They know they're, they're like, they're, they're even many entrepreneurs to a degree, or they're, they're experts in their field. So they you know, you have seven to eight different trainers who one is really specialized in X, Y, Z for the wind turbine company. And you have another one and roping them all together under one uh, uh, leadership, correct? Uh, yes. One messaging uh, under the same culture. And so then you help the company create maybe some culture statements and, and some systems in place because they may not have it. And that doesn't mean you're necessarily a subject matter expert, correct, Carl? Correct. Right. I don't necessarily know what they're going to be training. I'm an expert in people. And, and getting them to uh, work together. And ta again, taking that experience of what the, how the Navy trains an, an anybody, because there's a lot of newbies that come in. in yes, yes, so yes. Same thing with this turbine company. Yes. And the Navy, just like uh, any well-run company, has a system for bringing new people, training them up, getting them where they need to be and getting them productive. And that training never stops, by the way. A lot of times we had we do a training thing that is a uh, you know, we send somebody to the hotel conference room for four and a half days and they get trained on this or that. And they have a certificate now that says they are trained in this. But in fact, it's very lightweight training, very lightweight. What the Navy does is train from day one. If you spend 10 years in the Navy, you have been training every day for 10 years. If you spend 20 years in the Navy, you have been training every day for 20 years. Well, the, and, and I'm bringing it back to that question about what's the main obstacle and problem that a company would have from doing this is, would you say maybe one of the main problems is maybe not, not either not knowing, do they know they need it or, or is it not wanting to do it because there's someone stubborn? What's the, what would be the typical obstacle? Well, well, you've hit on a couple of things that are possible obstacles. I would say number one is they don't realize what's going on. They don't realize that they are so heavy into the status quo that they just can't advance with what they've got. And so they keep thinking that if they only can hire the right people, so they tweak their hiring systems, they tweak their interviewing techniques, they tweak the interviewing questions. They're still looking for that rock star performer instead of creating a system, creating a culture, an environment in the business such that everybody uh, can thrive. So what's the solution? What would uh, a person who wants to go, hey, I get it, Carl, I I don't want to just use HR to try to hire the, all the right people. I want to, I've got the right people, I believe, in my company. Uh, what's the thing they can avoid? What can they do to successfully create that culture? What can they do? Well, number one is to develop leadership and responsibility at every level in the organization. There should not be just uh, everybody running to uh, the boss every time there's a question. Uh, some more decisions should be made down on the deck plates. Deck plates. Tell me, <laughs> is that a reference to Navy, right? Yeah, absolutely. You got to throw them in there every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, to wrap it up, uh, what would be the best piece of advice if they're considering? Let's say it's a you know, let's say it's a mid-size level manufacturing company, and and they want to really get all those pistons firing <laughs> sure, on sure. the same place uh, and get that culture to where they can train within and build the leadership at every level. What's the best piece of advice you can give to somebody that's looking to do that? Make a decision to make some changes and take action. Go to my website, call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's definitely a good thing. So uh, 
Again, we've been talking to Carl Heckman, author of Watertight, How I Survived the Submarine Service Without Losing My Mind. And we've been discussing uh, a little bit about the things he learned while in the Navy and the, and the anecdotes and experiences he's, he's uh, documented in his memoir, the, uh, Watertight. Carl, uh, let me ask you this. What's, what's the best way that a person can get a hold of you and learn more about uh, your training system? Probably the quickest way to, to learn about me is go to my website, carlheckman.com, and that's Carl with a K, K-A-R-L-H-E-C-K-M-A-N. Heck of a man, if that helps you remember. <laughs> carlheckman.com. Well, that's great. Uh, just a reminder, again, Carl Heckman, uh, author of Watertight. Carl is a trainer who employs principles he learned while aboard the U.S. Navy nuclear submarines. His uh, he provides training on how to train managers and employees at every level, uh, mainly in the manufacturing industry, but other industries as well. It helps them to create better leaders at every level. He helps to create a culture that supports the mission of your company and helps to build better systems. Carl, I want to thank you for being on uh, the show today. And uh, anything else you want to say about what you learned uh, while doing the book? Thank you, Ed. I appreciate your time here. I learned that writing a book is a lot harder than you think. That's true. <laughs> well, again, thanks, Carl. Uh, check out his book. It's available at carlheckman.com. It's watertight, how I survived the submarine service without losing my mind. Thanks, Carl. Take care. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.